So one of the very few speakers that I've never sold, kept it for a year plus, is probably this speaker that I built. This is a DIY kit from CSS Audio. And right now, I'm about to make this speaker on an entirely different level. Because CSS Audio just introduced not too long ago this tweeter, an upgraded tweeter called the LD25X. It's a soft dome tweeter still, but a slightly larger tweeter. But what people don't realize is that you can't just change the tweeter and have the same crossover in there. You need to change out the crossover as well because it's a different driver. So actually, let me just um, take out the crossover here that I put into the cabinet. So this is the new crossover. And it's magnificent, it's beautiful, and it's high quality because this is the upgraded one. And let me tell you, damn, Pretty hefty, it's like a little small amplifier, if you so will, in terms of its weight, of course. Okay, so it's all done. This is the new CSS Audio. What people don't really realize is that actually changing the driver and the crossover, right? It's like, it's like an entirely different speaker. This is an entirely different speaker. But of course, it's still CSS Audio. Now, one thing about CSS Audio is that my original review of the One TDX, I compared it to this speaker, the Sonos Faber Electa Amateur. One of my favorite speakers of all time. I recently decided to purchase it. So, I mean, I compared it and said something on the lines of like the CSS Audio being a cheaper version with similar sound quality to a $10,000 speaker like this. And that speaker is beautifully built obviously and you know, it's, it's a much higher end speaker and stuff like that. But when it comes to the mid-range and the bass region, I really wouldn't need to buy it because this speaker does that kind of same thing. You know, it may not look as pretty. And it makes sense, a crossover in this guy is very similar to the quality, the level of quality, sorry for all the massive crossovers everywhere, as the, anyways, it's just the crossover, the things, the stuff that's inside the speakers and the drivers, they're very similar quality, right? If anything, I would argue that the CSS audio drivers are slightly higher in quality. But I mean, there's no questioning of which one is more beautiful. Clearly, the Sonos Fiber is more beautiful, more craftsmanship going on, Italian, you know, leather, just just a beautiful design. There's a brand name attached to it, obviously. But what we're interested in now is, you know, with a new upgrade that CSS Audio promises to be a substantial upgrade. They told me it's a substantial upgrade. So how 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 good is it now? So yeah, I don't regret anything. Now jokes aside, I recently decided to buy the Sonos Fiber Electamator 3 and the Maxima. And it's because it's my favorite speakers from Sonos Fiber of all time. Like th these speakers are the ones that I really wanted to buy for a very long time. And if you see my videos that date back like few years ago, like three years ago, I talk about this. I talk about how these speakers are so beautiful. I really like the tone, etc, etc. That Sonos Fiber sound. But at the same time, um, about a year ago, a company called CSS Audio reached out to me and they make DIY kits and mainly CSS Audio is a driver company, meaning they make drivers. So this company sent me a DIY kit that I built and you see that right behind me right now. And I never sold it because it sounded so close to the Electamator 3 and that's the speaker that I play when I miss the Electamator 3 and when I cry because I can't afford it. But now I can afford the Electamator 3, so I'm buying it. So I have no regrets there. I think I worked hard to earn that, and that is fine. But now they have this thing called the One TDX. This means that they have a tweeter called the 25X. It's an upgraded tweeter, 
and it comes with an upgraded crossover. Now, one thing that I said in the original CSS Audio video that I did, which I'll link in the description below, is that this is a future-proof passive speaker, which is extremely rare. I mean, for instance, let's say the Electamator 3 has now the Electamator 4. Now, I cannot upgrade the Electamator 3 to the 4. I would have to sell the 3 and buy the 4. That's usually how it works. However, because this is a DIY kit, you just put in the new tweeter, buy the new crossover, and now you have an upgraded speaker. It's future-proof. And that's exactly what I did. They sent me the tweeter. They didn't send me an entirely new speaker. They sent me a new tweeter and a crossover, and I switched it. That's exactly what I did in the beginning of this video. And now the sound that I'm getting is entirely different. Entirely different. And, and dare I say, you know what? It's not even dare I say. Like, if anyone has ears, these are superior speakers than the Electamator 3. And I hate saying that because, you know, there's something called owner's bias. You know, I, I own now the Electamator 3, but putting these speakers right after playing the Electamator 3, I can clearly tell that the 1TDX is a better speaker, sonically speaking, in every way possible. And that's kind of disappointing because this is a much you know, cheaper speaker. But at the same time, I mean, it's true. What else can I say? And if you're wondering if CSS Audio paid me out of my ass to say that, I can tell you, they didn't, but they should. But jokes aside, all I've gotten from them so far, if this matters to you, is the kit that I had to build. And the full video of me building the speakers will be in the description below. So enjoy that. That was something that I signed up for that I enjoyed doing, but also I drove like two hours, two and a half hours so that I can get them veneered. Anyways, one of the criticisms, and not a criticism because you know, DIY kits save you money and it's enjoyment of building it, but they didn't have a fully built speaker for the 1TD and the 1TDX. But now they do. Now they do. And yes, you're paying for the cost of them building it for you, but it's still a reasonable price. And you don't have to drive two and a half hours and pay the guy to veneer it for you and then pick it up two weeks after. You know, would have been really nice if you guys had that option for me, uh, you know, a year back, CSS Audio. But I'm glad to see you guys improving the selection. So in this video, we're definitely going to talk about the build quality briefly because we already talked about it. But we'll talk about the new tweeter and the new crossover and the value proposition there. And we're going to talk about the sound quality and exactly how it's better, uh, in my opinion, compared to something like the Sonos Fabric Electamator 3. That's the $10,000 speaker. However, I don't want you to misunderstand something. Okay, I don't want you to misunderstand the fact that you know, this speaker sounds better than a $10,000 Sonos Fiber speaker. Some speakers do. Some speakers are striving for sound quality and sound quality alone. Sonos Fiber is a luxury brand that has leather and unnecessary stuff like solid walnut and granite and stuff like that that will last you generations to come. It's more of a speaker that sounds good but looks good that's meant to last like decades, okay? And we see Sonos Fiber last decades. So I don't want to hear any of you guys bashing Sonos Fiber in the comment section saying, oh, you know, it doesn't worth, it's not worth $10,000 because yada yada yada. That's not true at all. That is not true at all. In fact, $10,000 speakers, a lot of it out there, <laughs> Sonos Fiber smashes them in the face like with a pancake. Like, like, Sonos Fiber Electamotor 3, there's a reason I bought it with my own money. But many of you ask me, is there a budget option that gets close to the Sonos Fiber Electamator 3? And my answer was the old 1TD kit that you had to buy and build and veneer yourself. But now they have a finished product plus the fact now they have an upgraded one called the 1TDX. That sounds better. So DIY usually usually wins if, if done right. Okay, before we go any further, can we get something out of the way first? And that's that not all DIY kits are gonna be a $10,000 speaker. It also doesn't mean that you should go DIY, buy some drivers and put it in a box and go, yes, I beat a Sonos Fiber $10,000 speaker. It doesn't work that way. Usually DIY involves a lot of work, time, effort, 
and a lot of software and knowledge. Well, in this case, all you are doing is assembling it. The R&D process, meaning the testing, the listening, the measurements, all done for you by the CSS Audio guys who are professional at this that's built a lot of DIY speakers over the years and has built many speaker designs. So they're pretty successful at it and they're just giving you value. They're just packing value into this. That's what they're doing. So that also means if you're someone that doesn't care about the looks, you could literally not put any finish on it and call it a day and you have a great sounding speaker for a fraction of the price. But if you want to put a good finish on it, then that'll cost you. Putting a good veneer and stuff like that will cost you big, big time. You could also put you know, $10,000 worth of leather and marble on the speakers and try to make a Sonos Fiber knockoff. I don't know why you would do that. You probably shouldn't do that. D don't do that. I mean, but you could. You could do it. That's the, that's the point. You could, but you shouldn't. You really shouldn't. So let's talk about the build quality really quickly. So in terms of build quality, I mean, if you build it yourself, it's entirely up to you. But for me, ever since I built it, it's been over a year, I think, it's held up pretty well. And honestly, I love the veneer finish. I just got it in the cheapest finish I can get in. And that was uh, this finish. And it's actually pretty gorgeous. Now, I'll have to tell you, veneer is not inexpensive, especially if you want to do it yourself. Unless you know how to do woodworking, you have to pay the guy who is gonna veneer it for you and do the finish for you. Uh, plus, you have to pay for the material. So you're looking around, you know, at the time when I did it, it was about $400. And that was on the cheaper side of things. If you want a more impeccable finish, more craftsmanship, whatever, then you're gonna have to pay the guy a lot more. Uh, if they're even willing to do it. So, that also brings to the question about a thousand dollars more for the one that's already finished by css audio i think it's worth it because uh <laughs> you're getting a speaker that's already finished and you don't have to deal with all that headache but if you know how to do it yourself that's also a plus driver wise this is an expensive tweeter the one on the original one td was already an expensive tweeter now on this one, it's even more expensive. This is a very high quality tweeter. In fact, I'll go as far as to say this tweeter is what makes this speaker so special sounding. We'll talk about the sound in a minute. Driver, I mean, I love this driver. It just The mid-range tone is just right on this driver. The specifications for the driver can be found online. You can, you can buy these drivers separately from CSS Audio and that's the great thing about them is that they make drivers themselves. So they sell you drivers. So there, if you ever, pooch by accident a cat or a, you know, a child or whatever you can just replace them so everything on the speaker is like kind of replaceable everything about it that's the great thing about this speaker another common question i get is should i upgrade the crossover <laughs> absolutely i got i covered this in my original video as well but it's about 400 dollars for the upgraded crossover it is very much worth it like there, there's a significant difference with this speaker I can't say that about all speakers, but with this speaker, there's a significant difference. And because the driver quality is so good, you definitely want to upgrade the crossover. And it's only $400 in my opinion. That is pretty much a steal for a chunky crossover. I mean, I thought the old crossover here was a steal, but you're getting a much chunkier crossover. Well, not much higher, higher quality, but you know, higher quality in my opinion um, in the 1TDX. Now in terms of placement, um, it looks like there's quite a, of a distance there, but it's about 1.5 feet. In fact, I put these speakers exactly where the Sonos Fabers speakers were, my favorite spot for the Sonos Fabers, because these speakers are literally, like I said, very close to the sound of the Sonos Fabers. We'll talk about the sound in a minute, but there, there are key differences, but it's close. It's like a better version in my opinion, uh, more refined version, but we'll talk about, talk about that in a minute. In terms of the amplification, we'll talk about that real quickly. Same thing with Sonos Fibers. It likes power, like the Denef Riss, um, Apollo over there, chunky. This is heavy, man. Like My back breaks every time I try to lift this. Do not attempt to lift it by yourself. I'm not saying I'm strong. I'm just, I'm just putting a disclaimer there so nobody breaks their back and blames me for it. This is the deckware. This is a pretty good tube amplifier. Love this on these speakers, more so than the Sonos Fibers because it brings out really nice mid-range and high frequency that is much more refined than the Sonos Fibers. Again, we'll talk about the sound in a minute, but look at the cables going on there. It kind of looks like a 
sci-fi movie. For the preamplifier, I have the Doge 10. I have the screws removed so I can easily switch out tubes. I have the Brimars in there. So that's the tubes I'm using, the Brimars, which are excellent tubes and my recommended tubes for the Doge 8 preamplifier. So using this as a preamplifier, using my Denaferps Terminator Plus. Source, I've been using the, um, uh, sorry about the dust here. It's kind of a place I don't really clean. Um, but anyways, uh, this is the Inuit Zen Mini Mark III. I used to use that. I just recently switched it to the iFi Zen Stream. And I've been really enjoying it for a few reasons, even more so than, than the Zen Mini Mark III. And so it's been going well. I'm still testing it. Um, so a video will come up on that. So make sure you're subscribed for that. Of course, I played my techniques, which is definitely <laughs> my go-to when it comes to analog. And of course I have my trusty MoFi turntable that I play. So many different sources. Um, I'm still missing a CD player, which I am getting one from a brand that I really, really like their CD players from. But anyways, uh, that'll be in the future. So that's a teaser there for you. So you say these speakers are better than the Sonos Fibers, how? Well, in many ways, but the overall sound signature, the overall sound tone, is very similar to the Sonos Fiber Electal Motor 3s. Now there's key differences and we'll go over the differences first and then go over the differences. Now in terms of the similarities, these have a little bit of that mid-bass energy that is similar to the Sonos Fiber Electal Motor 3. However, it is not as exaggerated, meaning these are a little bit more linear in extension. They do dig down a little bit lower than the Sonos Fiber, which is very surprising. But also they have a, a tuning port that you can tune to yourself when you DIY. So that's entirely really up to you as well. So a lot of this speaker is really up to you. And that is the key thing is that you have the flexibility with building the cabinet. If you want to build a cabinet, you, you have the flexibility to you know, change out the crossover parts if you want to do that. There's a lot of potential. But as it is, it is significantly better in sound quality than the Sonos Fiber Electamator 3. So there are a few ways this is better than the Sonos Fiber Electamator 3 or many of the other speakers, but here's number one, and that's high frequency extension. The high frequency is much more clear sounding, extends more, more clean. There's less grain, uh, so when you play music loud, for example, it's smooth, it's not like shouting at you or it doesn't give you ear fatigue. So the high frequency is a lot more transparent but at the same time it's less fatiguing and more clear and crisp than the Sonos Fiber Electamator or even some of like the Focal speakers that I've heard and with BMW speakers etc etc. So the high frequency is extremely good and that's the beauty about the speaker is probably because of that wonderful tweeter that is so good in the high frequency. Mid-range is pretty similar to the original 1TD in my opinion, slightly better has that, again, that little bit of that mid-bass tone that is similar to the Sonos Fiber that I love. So it has a bit of character, but at the same time, it's pretty neutral and balanced. And what I love most about the mid-range and the high frequency, and involves the high frequency as well, is the micro details. So what I mean by micro detail is, like, in between the speakers, if something is playing, right, you hear all the little... Like, it's so detailed and you can pinpoint, like, so well and that's called imaging. Not only center imaging, which is the sound that's coming directly between the speakers. So if I'm speaking, you shouldn't hear me from the left channel more or the right channel more. You should hear me from directly from the center. That is better on these speakers than these Sonos Fibers or, uh, or the BMWs. It's more similar to like Focal level you know, or, or Kef uh, LS50. Those have really good imaging in my opinion. Uh, Tannoys, you know, it's on that level in my opinion. But considering that this is not a dual concentric design, it's pretty impressive that it's on par or on that level. Again, in terms of that micro detail and micro nuances, I should say, it's pretty impeccable. It's pretty up there. Like, like I guess Focal and Magical is the ones that come to mind, but these are much less fatiguing. It's like a perfect, perfect balance. It's like if Focal and Sonos Fiber had a baby, and they decided to make the best speaker in the world. Okay, that, okay, maybe I'm going too far there. Maybe, I admit, maybe I'm going too far there. But that's how much I really like the high frequency and the mid-range on these speakers. So at times, literally, I would be able to hear like the performance being taken place and be able to literally exactly localize each and every instrument. And it's kind of freaky experience, but also very pleasant. Um, 
you know, even even speakers like Wilson Audio or Vocal, like even the higher end speakers, I'm talking about much more expensive speakers, like twenty thousand dollars plus. You know, those do things that these speakers don't. Obviously, scale, bass, whatever. But in terms of that nuance, that micro detail, it, it's up there. Like if that's what you're looking for, these speakers do it in such a great way, where it's not fatiguing, but it's there. Like everything is just just right there. It's not in your face. It's not screaming at you, it's not beaming, it's not, you know, ear fatiguing you, it's not murdering your ears, but it's just, just, everything is there and it's just so freaky experience. You know that goosebump you get when you hear like those nuances? That's what I get with these speakers. In terms of sound staging, like I think these speakers have a better power response or something like that because the, the off axis response on these speakers must be great because like, the sound staging I'm getting and overall, like even if I'm not in the room, like if I'm off to the side, it just sounds so big. It sounds really wide, much wider than the Sonos Fiber Electama Tour 3s. And when I say much, it's not that much. Like I'm over exaggerating here because that's kind of like the difference in sound staging when you come to this level. Both speakers are excellent in sound staging uh, and depth, but these speakers, have a little bit more kind of room filling kind of sound stage. Like it's more atmospheric. That's the right word. It's more 3D, more atmospheric. And that's what I like about these speakers. In terms of depth, it's pretty similar. I would say that the actually the Maxima, the Solon's Fiber floor standard is slightly more um, deeper in depth. However, even in comparison to the Maxima or even the Wilson Audio Sabrina, the high frequency is really impeccable. Like the, the high frequency is just so sweet sounding. That's the right word. It's very sweet sounding. It gives you that kind of like, oh, like I want to hear more of the high frequency. And that's kind of rare because I get ear fatigued. If you listen to music the entire day, if your job entails listening to music, listening to things, speakers, gear, the entire day to assess them, you get ear fatigued and sometimes you just want to do other things. This speaker, I was listening to it, like what time is it right now? It's like, it's 3.20 a.m. And I really didn't even see the time pass. Like honestly, I've been listening to the speaker, enjoying it so much. And I've been listening to the speaker nonstop. Like it's really, really good. And every time I listen to it, I get the same goosebump and that's rare. I mean, you get desensitized over time. And talking about the bass, like I said, the bass is strong, but it's not over exaggerated. It's pretty linear and honestly speaking, I don't really feel the need to add a subwoofer with this speaker. But again, like I would add, add totally if I were to buy these and have it for my main system, I would have um, a rail subwoofer or an open baffle subwoofer of some sort to just augment that you know, lower octave. But I mean, honestly speaking, like the mid bass punch is tight. It's even tighter than the Solus Fibers. Actually, I had a friend here um, not too long ago listening to the Sonos Fibers and then we just switched to these to compare and he was like, oh, that mid bass is just so much tighter on these. What are these? And so he might be buying those because he found these so significantly better than the Sonos Fibers. So he came in actually wanting to demo the Sonos Fibers because he was thinking of buying it and he had no where to demo it. And then I got, them, I got him to hear these. So. I, I, I guess I did so much fiber dirty there. But the whole point being is that if you haven't had a chance to hear these, definitely do so. Um, CSS Audio goes to shows. I mean, I think they were just at uh, Expona. But I, I, honestly speaking, just build one. It's fun, it sounds great. And I rarely say go buy this. That's not how my reviews go. I go, this is what I found. This is what, you know, you draw the conclusions if this is the right one for you. Honestly, <laughs> my friend said the same thing, but what is there not to like about this speaker? That's all I gotta say. So that's pretty much it for me. Thank you for watching guys and I hope to see you guys in the next video. Peace.